Dragon Ball Super episode 117. As you guys can probably tell, there's a bit of a format change, so before we get into the review in full, let's talk about that real quick. As you can see, it's the animator credits. The storyboard artist, director, supervisor, chief supervisor, key animators. It's all right there for you guys. I'll probably have to tweak it in the future because there was very few key animators on this episode. Only two versus usual episodes that have probably at least ten or more. So yeah, I will definitely have to tweak the format a bit, but for now, this will get the job done. And this is just to streamline the review so that I don't have to go over every single individual who worked on an episode and go into super great detail on all of that stuff. You guys can just see who worked on the episode in the sidebar. And for anybody who had any noteworthy scenes, I will, of course, mention that in the review. Where to start with this episode? Do I just go right for the throat and talk about State Puff Marshmallow Ribrienne? Or do I talk about other stuff? Let's talk about Goku's part of the episode, because it's really not much. It's Goku recovering uh, again, and Piccolo and Gohan want to go help him out, kind of guard him, but then, of course, the Namekians show up again, and that fight seems like it's going to continue in next week's episode, so that'll be cool. Definitely want to see that fight, you know, get its own episode, which really seems to be the case next week, at least based on the preview. It looks like we are going to get some Goku versus the Universe 2 guys, but I really want to see... Uh, you know, Gohan and Piccolo versus these Namekians in full, because what we've got of that fight has been really cool so far. So that's cool, and Goku gets confronted by these three guys, and yeah, nothing really happens. <laughs> they kind of just stare at him and say they're going to beat him up, but they don't actually do anything for the entire episode, which is a little weird, but it is like a two-minute episode because of this tournament's pacing, so it's not that unbelievable that they didn't attack him yet. The main bulk of the episode is 17 and 18, versus Ribrianne and, uh, what's her name? Rosie. Oh, and we also get Vegeta trying to use Ultra Instinct, which was really funny, because he just tries to go totally, like, limp and empty his mind, and then he just starts getting his ass kicked by the Common Rider dude. And, uh, that was a really funny scene. And then Vegeta beats the crap out of him, knocks him away, or I don't know if he knocked him away, but, uh, it's cool to see Vegeta trying to use Ultra Instinct, but, yeah, it was it was a really funny scene, just seeing him get smacked around like that, trying to empty his mind. I could definitely see Team 4 Star doing some funny stuff with that. But getting back to the androids versus uh, Universe 2's Warriors of Love, still in the ring, not for too much longer, thankfully. Uh, this was a really cool fight, honestly. Seeing Android 17 and 18 work together, seeing Rosie and... Uh, Ribrianne, though they're not the best team, Android 17 and 18 take advantage of how uncoordinated they can be, which leads to Rosie getting eliminated. Again, the strategy, the teamwork, the power scaling, everything about the combat in this episode is really, really solid, except for maybe some of the choreography is just sort of okay, but like, as a whole, it's a pretty solid episode from a storyboarding standpoint, uh, from a writing standpoint, in fact. It's really good, especially like the, you know, the romantic stuff. Well, not really romantic, but the touching moments between Krillin and 18 as 18's about to give up. A little cheesy, a little cliche, but I think it was pretty good. It's nice to see stuff like that. I'm a sucker for their, uh, for their relationship, so it was nice to see that. And uh, I like the scene between 17 and 18 when he's, like, patching up her leg and he compares it to, you know, even wor even experience. Like, it, everything that they were establishing for the Tournament of Power, like experience, teamwork, strategy, all those things that they were, you know, hammering into us before the tournament started, plays a part in this episode. And it played a part in previous episodes, too. But I'm glad it came back here, because for a while it's been you know, slugfest between Saiyan women and Goku, so it was really nice to see uh, more strategy. I mean, I guess Goku did use his experience against Kale and Khalifa a little bit, but yeah, it's nice to see an episode really focused on the teamwork and all that. I can't praise it enough for those aspects. And for finally eliminating Ribrian. That is the most fantastic part of the episode, especially since, based on the preview, I thought they might eliminate 18, which would suck, but now that 18 has had this really cool episode working together with her brother, taking on giant state puff Marshmallow Ribrianne. I think if 18 got eliminated, it'd be justified. I think she's had a lot of cool moments in this tournament, more than I expected her to have, honestly, and with a hurt ankle, yeah, I can see her getting eliminated soon, and it being justified, but, uh, yeah. So, with that being said, let's go a little more detail about state puff Marshmallow Ribrianne. That's a, that's a Ghostbusters reference, if you don't know. Speaking of Ghostbusters references, we also have 17 and 18 
merging their beams together and I love this I love the comedic visuals in this episode where the beam it hits the heart blast and it it breaks like a bro like a cartoony broken heart before it explodes really funny visual uh, 18 kicking Ribrianne's face in and her having to like puff it back out Ribrianne crashing into a rock and like having that like like when an arrow gets stuck into a rock like like really cartoony like sounds and like animations and Ribrianne like jumping out and like patting her cheeks it was a lot of cartoony animation but I really liked it it was really funny and it almost renewed my liking for Ribrianne as a comedic character almost she goes a little overboard with the love stuff talks shit about Krillin which pisses off 18 and then she turns into State Puff Marshmallow Ribrian, and thankfully she got eliminated. Because despite the fact that she was very funny visually in this episode, also the moment where she was in like her ball rolling form and like Rosie was like balancing on top of her and they crash into the ground, that was so funny visually. Like there were so many funny cartoony visuals in this episode, I loved it. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad she went out on a high note, but I am glad she went out at the same time. She lasted way too long, in my opinion, but I am glad we got this episode with her for her to be funny again and a little bit annoying again, which is the point of the character. So, yeah, Ribrianne went out as she lived, annoying and funny. So, uh, yeah, and I'm sure a lot of fans that hated her character are just super happy that she's been eliminated. And that is really good story progression. Uh, Animation-wise, like I said, you already know who worked on the episode if you've read the sidebar, but uh, the biggest scene in this episode is handled by Ryo Onishi, and it's fantastic. <laughs> it's the scene, I, obviously it's the scene where the animation bumped up massively in quality, but it's Stay Puft Marshmallow Ribrianne versus 18. Pretty much from the moment Ribrianne throws a punch, it switches over to Ryo Onishi, and it's awesome. It's loose detailed animation with lots of cool movements and fluidity to it it's great the choreography like her breaking the astral projection of her arm because that's what it is it's not like she actually became giant like a giant ape it's like an astral projection body with like physical mass to it and uh 18 breaks the arms jumps off the little pieces of it blows through her head it was really cool uh, i really liked it it was cool to see 18 get a moment like that Followed up by that really funny comedic moment with Supreme Kai before 18 slashes him across the cheek. That was another funny moment. It was really cool. It had some touching moments with 18 and Krillin, and Krillin practically wanting to jump in to help her, which we saw what happened to Frost, and Krillin saw what happened to Frost, and he's still, like, it's so, it's so cheesy, but it's so, like, I know it sounds cheesy, but it really is touching to see stuff like that and to see brother and sister you know he's patching her up and she's like no it's fine don't look at it you know that sibling rivalry thing it's really good characterization in this episode really solid animation from Yashima for a solo episode Ryo Nishi coming in to give it that really big climax with really solid animation more than solid really great animation and uh yeah I honestly really really liked this episode a lot more than I thought I was going to again Yashima episodes. He's a solo animator and he doesn't always deliver, but for some reason his episodes just have really good writers and storyboarders on them despite him solo animating. And it really just, I love his episodes for that. It's, I don't know, he's just the supervisor, but for some reason I get excited when I see Yashima episodes. But with all that being said, I don't really have much else to say about the episode. A lot of fun visuals, a lot of cool action, a lot of nice touching moments, good story progression. It's an all-around really great episode of Dragon Ball Super, in my opinion. But what is your opinion on the episode? Go ahead and tell me in the comments section below. Did you like it? Did you not? Give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. Click the little bell to get notifications when my videos go up. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.